Hello and welcome to SciJoy. We're gonna build a weather balloon and we want you to participate with us. This video is gonna be an overview of what our weather balloon is before we start designing and constructing it. We've never built one before, so you're gonna be learning along with us. When you think of amateur ballooning, you might think of pictures and videos from the edge of space. These types of balloons might be called near space or more commonly high altitude balloons because they can reach 100,000 feet in altitude. Weather balloons is probably the most commonly used term. This might be because the National Weather Service launches balloons from 92 stations every day. They release about 72,000 balloons every year. Sometimes these are also called sounding balloons, and their payload is called a radiosonde, which measures temperature, pressure, and relative humidity. It also measures GPS and tracks wind speed. It's probably called a raywind sonde. These terms weather balloon, near space balloon, sounding balloon, and high altitude balloon seem to be used interchangeably. And we wanted to tell you each of these in case you're searching for something or looking for a vendor and you can't find what you want, you might wanna try one of the different terms. We start out with an unfilled balloon. We need to inflate it with a gas that is less dense than the nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide that dominate our atmosphere. The most commonly used ones are helium and hydrogen, but we're gonna use helium since it's less likely to be all explodey on us. Helium is one of the noble gases on the periodic table. This means it's happier and more stable to use. The balloons are typically made out of latex. You should wear gloves when you're handling the balloon to prevent any oils from your hands getting onto its surface. They should also be kept out of the sun as long as possible. UV rays can damage the material and many people inflate their balloons on tarps to avoid any punctures during the filling process. All three of these measures will reduce the chance of your balloon exploding before it should. You might also want a backup balloon just in case. Some people attach devices that puncture or rupture the balloon when it gets to a certain altitude. Other balloons have devices that slowly release the gas from the balloon, and this allows it to descend back to the ground at a known pace. These options give teams more control over their flight path, but they are much more elaborate setups. Our recovery system is just gonna be a simple parachute. Attached to this parachute is a payload train. We will have three payload packages. One package will have a camera system, another will house the tracking system so we know where our payload lands, and the last one will have sensors and scientific instruments. Everything is attached and we are ready to release the balloon and payloads. In future videos, we will pick the balloon size, volume, type, calculate the free lift, and determine its burst altitude. We will also build a fill station, but for now, let's just launch. Just like a pool float rising to the surface, the balloon is pushed aloft due to buoyancy. As the balloon rises through the atmosphere, the air pressure outside decreases, and this means there's less force pushing against the outside of the balloon, so it starts to expand. The temperature is also dropping and might get to negative 70 degrees Fahrenheit or even lower. Your electronics have to be able to withstand these temperatures. A simple solution that some people use is throwing it in a few hand warmers. These should last a few hours, and depending on your balloon and parachutes, flights seem to range from about 90 minutes to three hours. Another issue that people find with temperatures is sometimes condensation forms on the lenses of cameras. Our balloon and payload isn't the only thing traveling in the sky. We need to make sure that our system is safe for other aircraft. We follow the Federal Aviation Administration guidelines for unmanned balloons. And if our entire payload system is under 12 pounds, each package is no more than six pounds, no part is more than four ounces per cubic inch, and the attachment for the payload can break at less than 50 pounds of force, then we do not have to notify the FAA or air traffic control. Styrofoam coolers are cheap and a light way to construct a payload system. We will link to all the regulations in the description below, and you should read the latest versions yourself. Our balloon will eventually reach an altitude where the expanding gas creates too much pressure on the latex, and the balloon will burst. This is a very violent event for the entire system. Your payload might see several Gs of force. You wanna make sure that everything is wired securely so the event doesn't wreck your entire electronics. This is especially important for your tracking system. There is only one instance I saw where shards of a balloon became tangled in their recovery system, making it unusable. The parachute won't slow the payload down much at first since the density of the air is so low. A larger parachute will slow your payload down more, but it will also cause it to drift farther away and it will take away from our flight weight limit. 
So where do we start? We set up some requirements for our project, and these requirements will drive the design and testing of our payload and the rest of the balloon system. We want a payload train and a recovery system that is less than 12 pounds, and each payload package should be less than 6 pounds. This means we will not have to contact the FAA or the ATC prior to our launch. The payload train will have a camera, tracking, and science packages. The balloon will inflate with helium, and we have an objective altitude of 100,000 feet. We really want to launch in June, if at all possible. Knowing the gas type, the altitude goal, and the payload weight, we can pick a balloon, and we can work on our flight profile. After we hear from you, we can start to design and build our science payload. What are you interested in measuring about the flight or about the atmosphere? The parachute will be chosen after we have a better idea of the weight of the rest of the payload. What kinds of tests do you want us to run before we launch? Thank you so much for exploring with us today, and we will see you next time.